911, do you have an emergency? Today on Rescue 911, an empty drainage ditch quickly fills with a torrent of water. Come on, get up, Kamisha, come on! Washing away a young girl in its fury. I thought, my God, she'll never, she won't make it. And a young boy's heroic efforts could be her only chance at life. The greatest achievement possible is to save someone's life. By doing so, we're giving other human beings a second chance to pursue their hopes and dreams. I'm William Shatner. Tonight, true stories of compassion, strength, and courage under pressure on Rescue 911. We begin on September 16, 1991, after a series of heavy rainstorms passed through the city of Arlington, Texas. As the weather cleared, 10-year-old Kamisha Riddle and her friend Ginger Garland headed outside to play. These storm drains are extremely dangerous because they can fill up very rapidly and they're extremely hard to get in and out of. It occurs occasionally that it'll be raining upstream from you and it'll even be clear overhead. You won't even see a cloud and it just takes a few moments for it to fill up. My mom said don't go down in the creek because you could get hurt. But we were going to some girl's house. And Misha said, let's go into the creek because it's easier to get to that girl's house. I didn't think anything could happen because it didn't look like anything could happen. The water started getting higher. And it was scaring me. Help me! Grab my hand, Help. Misha! Come on, get up, Kamisha! Come on! Come on, get up! You can do it! Please, Misha! Come on! She was saying, help me. Pull me up quick. Naomi Stevens and her 15-year-old son, Jeff, were in their backyard when they heard the cries for help. At first, when I heard it, I thought, well, it's just somebody playing. But then, in your mind, you wonder, no, that, that's not it. It was somebody who, somebody was in trouble. Oh, God, hang on, honey, hang on! When we made eye contact, I think I felt just sheer terror. And the expression on her face, I don't think I'll ever forget and my feeling of helplessness, not being able to do anything. Fire department. Naomi called 911. 360. Uh, 360 and what? I'm sorry. Ma'am, I've got to know where it's at. Okay. I live at 31 Cloverdale. Okay. I need to ditch behind our house. Behind your house. I have a child. How old is I don't have any idea. I, mean, I just heard a child screaming. I saw the child going down screaming. Okay, you did see the child? In yes, ma'am. Okay. Did it look like a small child or an older child? Don't let anybody get in there with them okay. or we'll have more people to get out. Okay, bye. All right, bye. Bye-bye. Neighbors Rick and Janice Cook spotted Jeff as he ran by their house. I know he's, he's in athletics. We just assumed that he was racing until his mom ran out the front door. I was running down the street. I was hoping and praying that I'd get down there in time, that I could do something. And I was thinking, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. When we continue, it goes completely under the freeway. With the water moving as fast as it was, I didn't think we'd have time to get to her before she went under. Ten-year-old Kamisha Riddle was swept away by a flash flood while walking in a concrete drainage canal near her house. 
When a 15-year-old boy heard her cries for help, he and some neighbors set out to try and rescue the young girl before she drowned in the swirling waters. When the uh, creek gets to the 360 intersection, there's four large culverts that it's divided into, and uh, it goes completely under the freeways. You can't, even on a bright day, stand on one side of the creek and look and see daylight out the other side. With the water moving as fast as it was, I didn't think we'd have time to get to her before she went under. Rescuers with the Arlington Fire Department had no way of knowing where the girl was in the storm drain. I didn't jump in after her because the water is moving too fast and I probably would have either pulled her under or she would have pulled me under. And when I get down there, he says, she's already gone under. I thought, my God, she'll never, she won't make it. At that point, I didn't think we'd find her alive. There was just too much water, and with the dark in there, I'd afraid she had panicked, and, and that would have been it. <laughs> I just kind of figured the best place to go would be the last place where she would have to go through. By this time, I was crying because thinking about the mother of that child, how was she going to feel? What if something did happen? What if they didn't get there quick enough? What if they couldn't pull her out? And uh, it was a very emotional time. I see her, I see her, there she is. I don't know what she was holding on to, but she was screaming, help me, help me, I can't hold on much longer. There was just no way he could reach her. I mean, it's just too far away. At that point, that's when I told Jeff, I said, well, just... Let me grab hold of your arm and let me lower you down. She was just in panic. Somebody! It was just sheer terror on her face. She kind of grabbed a hold of my wrist and it was a big relief. When we picked her up, and actually I was carrying her, she was still hollering for someone to get her out. She was hollering for help to get her out. So she was just in total hysterics. I had concerns that she had some sort of internal injuries, but I knew I had to keep her as quiet as possible, as still as possible. Hearing the sound of sirens, Rick drove toward them and managed to get the attention of one of the rescue units. When the young girl's mother, Claudia Riddle, was rushed to the scene, she had no idea what condition her daughter was in. The ambulance had shut its doors and started to pull away real slow. Ambulance, move over to the right. I started to panic, and I ran up to the side of the ambulance, and one of the paramedics came out and I was screaming and crying by then, and he said, Mrs. Riddle, calm down. We need to talk to you. And I thought something had happened to him. And he opened the door. 
And hi, Mom. Look, I've got Snoopy Band-Aids. <laughs> Although the swift-moving waters carried 10-year-old Kenesha down the concrete ditch for several miles, she suffered only minor bruises. At one part, I just sat there and gave up. Just hope I died because it was scary and I already thought I was going to die, so there's no use trying anymore. I think Jeff is a hero because he saved me. I learned that I'm able to do things that I didn't think that I would ever do. I'm kind of glad I found out that I would be able to help somebody when they need me. I thought I was going to get my butt busted because I knew I was not supposed to play in the creek, and I did. I think it was dumb. I have learned not to take things for granted anymore. Because when you come that close to losing somebody you love, it makes you stop and think and appreciate things.